Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of MBS Vibes. So today's video, we're focusing on Halloween. I really want to know how many of you guys and girls out there celebrate Halloween because I know you do it for the kids. That's cool. That's fine and all. And I want to start off by letting you guys know I'm not one of the people who celebrate Halloween for different reasons, which I'm not going to get into right now. I think we're all willing participants in a ritual that we don't even understand what's going on, but we just partake in it. But I really don't, and I will really advise you not to like that, because I feel like it's really demonic, and the energy is putting out in the atmosphere is not a positive energy, and you know it's all about the vibes and vibrations. So what energy are you vibrating on when you're celebrating Halloween? Because it's all positivity over here, even though some people might see me and think they know me but i feel like i'm really misunderstood but throughout my videos i hope you guys really get to understand and know who i am but i hope everybody is safe during this time and stay away from crazy people but i figure how can you stay away from crazy people when you're celebrating a whole holiday for crazy people right on the same note I personally don't celebrate Halloween, so how I celebrate Halloween is by saving lives. I donated some blood and um, just giving blood to the people who might need it in this horrendous holiday. This video right here will enlighten you on a little history about Halloween and give you guys more clarity a little bit. If you are so-called Christian or you just believe in a higher power or whatever it may be, I'm just saying this video will really help you and direct you on the right path. So please like, share, subscribe, and let me know what you think of the video at the end. And let's start. First of all, the history of Halloween starts with a holiday, an ancient Celtic holiday. It's pronounced Samhain. All Saints Day or All Hallows Eve is much later on the timeline. In ancient Britain and Ireland, the Celtic festival of Samhain Eve was observed on October 31st at the end of summer. It was an occasion for one of the ancient fire festivals when huge bonfires were set on hill, hilltops to frighten away evil spirits. The souls of the dead were thought to revisit their homes on this day and the autumn festival acquired sinister significance with ghosts, with witches, hobgoblins, black cats, fairies, and demons of all kinds said to be roaming about. In addition, Halloween was thought to be the most favorable time for divinations concerning marriage, luck, health, and death. So right away, if I did not tell you this was the festival of Samhain, you would automatically be thinking Halloween because this describes it to a T and we haven't even gotten started yet. So ladies and gentlemen, we see right off the bat that the actual origin of Halloween had nothing to do with All Hallows Eve, that its roots go all the way back into a pagan cultic festival called Samhain. Today, even in Satanism, the High Holy Day, guess what it is? October 31st. Where do you think they get that from? Is it made up? They too believe. God comes up to you. He creates a holy day. He calls it Passover. Tells you that you have a meal, to, to have a meal with unleavened bread. To remember the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Then Satan hijacks it, comes to you. So now Satan is talking to you. He tells you to do this. To change the name to the wife of Baal the goddess of Easter, and start adding in other traditions and pagan pagan things like dying Easter egg, killing of and eating Easter's ham. Add in a bunny, because that's a symbol of fertility for the ancient pagans, and so on. He even says this, it'll be easier for the pagans to accept Christ if you do this, because this is what they're used to doing. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take Passover, I want you to change it. I want you to add in all these pagan things that the pagans are used to doing because it'll be easier for them to convert to Christianity if you come on their side of the fence and start doing pagan things in pagan ways. And he's silent. What do you do? 
do you do it? In the first century, you've never seen Halloween. You've never seen Christmas. You've never seen Easter. The only thing that you know is that all of your 11 brothers, the disciples, are celebrating the feast days. They're celebrating the Shabbat, the Sabbath. They're keeping Passover. You're doing these things. And Satan comes along and says, no, no, no. We've got to reach the masses. And here's how we do it. We changed the name, added a bunch of pagan stuff. What do you guys think? Who in their right mind in the first century would do that? They would say exactly what Yeshua said. Get behind me, Satan. Yet today, this is exactly what we've done. You know what we need? We need an alternative. Let's call it a harvest festival. No, how about we just call it Sukkot? Ladies and gentlemen, the Christian church has been trying to find alternative for Halloween for 50 years. And I submit to you, Mr. or Mr. Christian, that God already has one. It's called the Feast of Tabernacles. It's a harvest festival. Why do we have to invent things when God has already perfected things? How many have heard of this trunk or treat? This is very popular now because we don't want to send our Christian kids out on the street in our subdivisions because they might get killed. So Christian parents don't want to do this. So what do they do? We invented something different. Everybody bring your car, decorate your car, open up the trunk, get your lawn chair out, let all the kids go trunk to trunk. We'll call it trip and trunk or treat. Ladies and gentlemen, all we're doing is celebrating Samhain. I like the famous phrase is, you can put lipstick on a pig. It's still a pig. If you want to kiss a pig with lipstick, that's fine. But when you take that blindfold off, you're not going to be happy. And at the end of the day, when our blindfold on Judgment Day is taken off and God shows you outside of time, because when he looks down and he sees these little children dressed up as whatever, at the same time, because he's outside of time, he sees little children being sacrificed and the people dressing up as demons to try to trick the demons to leave them alone. He has not called his people to mix for the purpose of witnessing. The biblical definition of witnessing is to be holy. And the definition of holy is to be kadosh, separated. When you separate yourself, not in, 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 a, in a sarcastic way of looking down on them, but when you in love separate yourself from the unholy, a line gets drawn in the sand and it becomes clear which God is which. And at the end of their day, when Halloween parties are over and their drunken orgies are done with, they're dead, hungry, thirsty, and starving, hurting, going back to marriages and falling apart. And they only know that that person down the street has a great marriage. My co-worker is brilliant and shining. Why don't you celebrate Halloween? This is why. But you know what? You, gotta, you seem to have... Can you give me some advice on my life? You see, when we come out of the world... We become a, a beacon in the night. When you hang around people that, that, are, that are not of Yahweh, but are of the world, they put bushels on your light, and you don't even know it. I would hope most of you in this room, and those of you who are watching online, when I ask the question in the first century, would you do this if Satan told you to, to take a holiday that God said was holy and change the name and add a bunch of pagans? To it? You would never do it. But we do it today. And we justify it by as well, if you can't beat it, you might as well join them. I want to witness. You are not allowed to enter into a pagan festival with the purpose of witnessing. Let me give you the law of extrapolation to prove it to you. You are not allowed to go into a strip club to witness to the ladies on stage. But if you believe that you can hand out and witness to kids coming to your door, and enter into a pagan festival and Christianize it, you're creating a law that says that you can do the same thing. Because how come I can't go into a strip club and witness if I can witness in this? They're both pagan. They're both demonic. They're both evil. They're both of, both of the world. That means that you get to play God. You get to play Scripture. You get to create the laws, the instructions for how to witness to God, to, to the people of the world. I submit to you, we do Bible things in Bible ways and we leave the world out of it and let the chips fall where they may. And you'll watch the church at large worldwide 
go from a compromised, watered-down church that doesn't know, come here from sick, and they can't tell you what Lamentations is about, to a church that begins to grow and mature, strong in the faith, uncompromising. I'm telling you, this is the day that we nail onto the doors of the church at large today, and we say, enough is enough. I'm done compromising. I will stand with my king and his word, and I will not falter. Him.